if you have the notes, if you go to page 12, what we're going to do is basically we're going to follow a workflow chart, which are on the following two pages. But on 12, I just kind of want to let you know this is an essential element on how best to approach and use Photoshop for photographers. It's important to standardize your workflow. It will increase your productivity because you have some sort of an organization going on. You're going to notice that the workflow chart is divided into four sections. You'll see that the vertical writing describes the section. Open file in ACR is one section, optimize file in ACR, optimize master file in Photoshop. And then on page 14, we probably won't spend any time at all in this section. There's also some handy speed keys there on page 14. I put down here what I consider the 10 essential speed keys. You can just leave page 13 open at this point because that's basically the checklist we're going to follow. On the first check mark, it says duplicate, rename, and work on a copy of your original file. Now, in Bridge, if you highlight this image and then just go, I believe it's to edit, and hit duplicate, and it made a duplicate of it, it put the word copy. If the copy is a raw file, open an Adobe Camera Raw plugin. How do I do that? All I did was I just dragged the file into Photoshop from Bridge. Actually, I double-clicked and it opened it. So if I go back to Bridge and I can open it again, I didn't do anything to it. Okay, so now we're going to optimize the file in Adobe Camera Raw. So the first box in that says adjust the optics panel, except in Camera Raw Filter. Let me explain the difference. When we open this, it opens in a program called Adobe Camera Raw. It's a plug-in. It's a technically a separate program. If you have a TIFF or a JPEG that you want to work on using the principles that are in here, you can do that in Photoshop also, and it's called Adobe Camera Raw Filter. It's in the filter section. If you want to know more about that, if you have a lot of non-RAW files and you really want to work on, then I would take that Class 3 or buy my book. It's in there too. So adjust the optics panel. Let's talk about these panels a little bit. I'm going to close the basic panel. You may recall that I said earlier that we're going to keep things simple. I don't use pretty much anything over here. I only leave the edit tool on. The rest of these are these GWiz functions that are all nice and handy, but you can do them better in Photoshop with a heck of a lot more tools. So I wouldn't bother with that. Another thing that you might look at here is toggle full screen mode. Again, this is a lot of just basic stuff from class three, the raw fundamentals class. You can see that when I have it not toggle full screen mode, I've got a lot of stuff in the background. It's very distracting and I can't stand that. So I automatically toggle full screen mode so I have no distractions when I'm looking at the image. You'll see that there's a set of panels over here and there's really only, uh, I think, four panels that you're gonna need and the rest of them you can pretty much ignore. A basic, detail, color mixer and optics and so you can try the other ones but I think the, uh, there are better ways to do things using the levels view saturation which we're going to see in just a few minutes even on this image so the first thing it says here is adjust the optics panel so oh and if they're closed like this of course you want to open a panel then you click on it and it will open if you go up to the basic panel and click on it or any other panel let me go to detail it closes the first panel folds it back up in itself and opens the new one Okay, so optics. First thing I would do regardless is just remove the chromatic aberration. Doesn't hurt anything. I would automatically get into the habit of checking that. The next is use profile corrections. And so if I click on this, what happens is you'll see the vignetting at the side disappear. Sometimes that's a, a good thing, but at least you have control of the amount of vignetting you do in your master file rather than it being determined by this. And then it also changes the parallax and kind of pushes the middle of the image out to you. See there? Here's before. And there's after. So that takes care of the optics. Then the next one is just the basics panel. And this is where you're going to spend a good portion of your time. By the way, I would do these in the order shown because if you adjust the basic panel first and then go say, oh, I forgot to do the profile corrections or whatever, um, it might change what your image is like. So the second thing I'll do is I'll open the basic panel. When I click on that, then that shows up. That's where you're going to probably spend 90% of your time, just so you know. Now, the four goals of RAW were to make it slightly darker in the original, slightly lower flat in contrast, best overall color balance, and slightly oversaturated. So right now, this is a high contrast image, and the color is kind of dull, so we can do some work on that. Also, one of the things that it says here, and I talk about this in class two a lot, which is adjust your contrast and color, is that you want to adjust your exposure and contrast first, then your color. If you adjust your color first and then go adjust your contrast uh, or brightness, it will throw the colors off, and it's not near as true when you do it the other way. The first thing I'm going to do, and I would suggest you do the same thing, is ignore this first box at the moment. In fact, if you do this right, you may not even need to change the color. 
depending on the exposure. Oh, a couple things I almost never use. I almost never use a saturation tool. I prefer the vibrance tool. It's got a really nifty algorithm in it that can saturate an image without it really looking oversaturated in, in a lot of ways. If I'm going to do anything with the contrast, I'm going to decrease the contrast. Remember one of those four goals was low in contrast? Okay, so let's start with our shadow detail and highlights. We'll also control our overall brightness and our contrast by opening up the shadows. I'll go ahead and move this all the way to the right. Didn't make that much of a difference. By the way, this is another button you should get to know right down here on the right-hand side. Toggle to default settings. It will show you before and after. So you can see we've done very little on that. I'm also going to actually increase the exposure. This is to me is too dark. We want it slightly dark. So I'm going to open up the exposure and you're going, but John, but John, now the highlights are getting washed out. You're right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to highlights and the whites and reduce those. By the way, you have highlights and whites. The highlights basically takes care of uh, everything up to the very, very tippy, tippy white stuff. And then the whites will take care of that. So I usually adjust the highlights first. Okay, you can see we're starting to bring detail back. Now, we don't really have a whole bunch of washed out areas here. Okay, highlights, I want to bring those down a little bit. Okay, so here's before and after. All right, now we're getting some detail in here, which we want. So you've got shadows, which I opened up to 100%. If I wanted to open up some of these black areas, then I'll move this just a little bit. Remember, we want to keep it flat. Yeah, that actually made a big difference. Now we can see some detail in the black areas that were here. Here's before. And there's after. Let's see, the basics panel, if you want to attend class three, whenever that is, we'll spend a lot more time on this. Texture is something that I usually will add about 10, depending on the image. And this one, I probably won't add any more than that. I never, 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 never add clarity and dehaze because it defeats the purpose of the four goals. Remember, the four goals is we want as much information in this visible spectrum, i.e. the histogram, as we can get. I will add a little edge sharpness, it's called texture and depending on the image if it's got a higher noise image i may not do any if it's an image that's slightly soft i will increase that texture but rarely more than 25 or 30 percent you can think of dehaze as a coarse edge adjustment the clarity is a mid edge adjustment and the texture is a fine edge sharpening adjustment I'm going to go ahead and add just like 10 units of texture. That's more than enough for an image like this. If you zoom in on the image and adjust the texture, you might be able to see a difference. Most of the time, you won't see a difference. Again, we just want to take care of a lot of failure that's built into digital capture, and this kind of helps you give a little edge before you go into, no pun intended, edge since it's edge sharpening, into Photoshop. And then the last thing I usually do is I usually kick up the vibrance so that we've got, particularly in the reds, that says the basics panel, and the next is adjust the color mixer panel, which remember I said there's only really four panels we're going to need to work with. So I'm going to go to the color mixer panel. And what I want to do is I really want to punch these reds, or these oranges, and it's one of those two, so I want to increase the saturation. I don't need to change the color orange, which means I would move the U slider. I just need to increase the saturation or the intensity of the amount of orange or red. Let's go with red, too, and see what happens. That's not as much red as I thought. It's probably yellow and orange. Either way, when you have, you can see that I have used one, two, three of these panels. I got them all closed right now. There's an eyeball here. If you click on that, it will show you before and after. You just hold down on that eyeball. There's before. The color didn't really make much difference. And here's after. It did. It punched up the color in, in here. By the way, we're, this is going to be a radical crop, as you'll see coming up. I think that pretty much meets the four goals of RAW. Here's before what we started with. The four goals were to make it slightly darker. It, that is, okay, even though we actually increase the exposure on that, that's the exception rather than the rule. The number two was to low in contrast. We're definitely low in contrast because we could see that instead of having real deep shadow areas, we actually have kind of an even spread all the way across as far as tonal value is concerned. Let's see, number three was saturation. And then the fourth was best overall color balance. And this one really looks fine. The only thing we might do in the final version is get rid of this blue cast in this white area, which we'll be able to do because we're going to be setting these up into this particular image into two zones. Okay, so it meets the four goals. And I'll go ahead and open. And when I do, the three things happen we talked about earlier. It closes Adobe Camera Raw plugin. It creates a .xmp file unless it's a DNG file. Then it puts the metadata into the file. And then the third was it opens in Photoshop. Right now, we're at the end of section two where it says open in Photoshop, which is what I just did. And then the first thing I like to do on the uh, section three, oh, up to optimize master file in Photoshop, is save as a new TIFF or PST in Photoshop. Now, like I said, I like the .psd format. 
and I like to put an underscore capital M at the end so I also know. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. We're going to save it back into the same folder. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an underscore capital M so I know that it is my master file for this image, even though I've done nothing to it yet. All I've done is prepared my raw file and brought it in. But this way, instead of working 45 minutes and not saving, every five minutes we're going to make a new adjustment layer. I'll just hit Command S or Control S to save that image as I'm going along. Okay, so now that I've got that saved as my master file, if I was going to do any touch-up cloning, that what have you, I would do it now. If you don't do it now, you can do it. I have a finishing touches class. It's a small group workshop which talks about various cloning methods and stuff. We're not going to do any touch up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this image into th two zones. And when I do on uh, that third section, I'm going to combine these three steps to divide your image into zones of brightness, contrast, and color. Uh, I can let you know what selection tool I'm using as I use it. There's also two strategies when creating a layer mask in an adjustment layer. Strategy one means you're going to create an adjustment layer and then shape it after the fact, which I don't use very much. The other one is strategy two, which says make a selection, and then when you create your adjustment layer, the selection will reveal whatever your selection was. So that's what I'm going to do. When you're doing these, a lot of these, you may have to make sure your background copy is active. So I'm going to use a selection tool called Color Range. Again, I can't talk too much of the procedure, but what I want to do is I want to pick as much of the orange. Oh, the other thing I should mention too, let me hit cancel, is I'm going to crop and I use guides. They don't show up in your image or anything, but it's really handy to kind of decide ahead of time how you want to crop. To make the guides work, you just make sure you have the rulers active and you just go to the view menu and make sure that rulers are on. And when you do, on the one on the left and the one on the top, you can drag a guide wherever you think it needs to be. And more than one. And if you want to move the guide, you go to the move tool, blah, blah, blah. If I'm losing you, just email me and I'll send you a quick little cheat on how that will work. But really, this is more, I would think, what we really want to concern ourselves with. I mean, that's a decent composition. And if you were at the judges round table, you'll know one of the things that we talked about is that, especially in tier one, most people did not crop right. They didn't crop in enough. The late, great Dave King, who we just talked about, had one of his Daveisms that said that we as judges know there's an image in there somewhere, but it's not up to us to find it. And so a lot of tier one stuff got rejected because it wasn't crop right. So now back to the selection. I got go select tool, color range. Anyway, I'm going to keep picking values. White reveals, you can see what I'm picking right here, and black hides the effects of what I'm trying to do. And that's pretty close. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Strategy 2 says as soon as you do that and make a selection, which I just did, I'll create an adjustment layer. In this case, I'll use levels. You can see that's all it picked. Not only that, but it picked it with gray values between the selection so that we don't have a hard, sharp, harsh edge. Sometimes it's desirable, sometimes it's not. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is also part of that whole creating a zone, that's our first zone, even if I've only got one adjustment layer in there now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reselect Levels 1, and now I'm going to select the inverse of that, which is everything else, and create another Levels Adjustment Layer, and there is Zone 2. Now, I'm not using the use saturation because we're running out of time, and I want to just show you the basics of what we're doing and the difference between what we started with and what we're going to end up with. And this is straight from Class 2, using the Levels and the use saturation and not clipping. I'll be clipping if I go too far, and you can see that red masking. That means I'm throwing pixels out that we don't want to throw out. Now I'll go to the background and do the same thing. And again, this is a straight out of class 2 and class 4 to a certain degree. And you can see the difference already. I haven't even gotten into the fine-tuning, but you can see the difference with what we started over here and what we're ending up with because the information was there. And there are other things that I would do to it, but basically what I did is got us through three quarters of the way through uh, the third section there in hand, Optimized Master File in Photoshop. Now one thing I haven't been doing is I have not been hitting the Save button, and I can go to File Save, but I'm going to use the Speed key, which is Command S, Control S on a PC, and it will save that image for me. Oh, I know what I was going to show you is I wanted to reselect everything but the pinnacles and then create a U saturation adjustment layer of just that. I don't like the blue and the shadow here. Now it may look like that and the photographer may decide, you know, maybe I want the blue and because it's in a layers, he can come back in that and add the blue if he wants. But I kind of like it with, you see how much blue there is? Okay, look at the difference. That's probably too much. It almost looks black and white. 